Hi, uh, I recently read a uh, fantastic work of non-fiction called Imagine a Country, edited by Val McDermott and Joe Sharp. Um, basically in one sentence, uh, this is uh, how people would like to imagine a uh, future Scotland in the uh, not too distant future. Uh, I'll just read the uh, back of the blurb which says the same thing. Uh, Imagine a country offers visions of a new future from an astounding array of Scottish voices, from comedians to economists, writers to musicians, edited, curated and introduced by best-selling author Val McDermott and geographer Joe Sharp. It is a collection of ideas, dreams and ambitions aiming to inspire change, hope and imagination. And you can see there it's got a whole list of names. There's there's lots and lots of people. Uh, I think the most well known would be uh, Alan Cumming, the uh, actor. Um, I think maybe best known for playing uh, one of the X-Men, I can't remember the name, Night something, Night, uh, no, I can't remember the name, the blue guy, <laughs> um, I think I was an X-Men, the first movie, I think, um, other actors there as well, there's at least three poets, uh, Carol Ann Duffy, Jackie Kay, um, there's about three artists, there's, um, a uh, filmmaker at the back uh, named um, Christopher Young. Uh, there's um, maybe one or two architects. Uh, I think most of the rest are writers. And um, one sort of a uh, the only one um, criticism of this book uh, is that there is actually a, sort, of, sort of the same old names in terms of um, uh, like Scottish book festivals and um, uh, Scottish writing. There's um, people who have appeared there time and time again um, and there is sort of a lack of diversity there's um, I would say maybe about four uh, uh, BAME people um, Sanjeev Kohli being the best known of them um, uh, but I think it's an undeniable fact that the majority of the people uh, in the book are white, although I think I have to say that the majority of Scotland population wise is white, although there is, I would say, quite a mix. Um, but I would say England probably has much more of a mix, um, mainly because of London. I mean, London's maybe the most diverse place on the planet, possibly. But in terms of uh, media, uh, mixed media is definitely diverse, so it has that. Um, all the pieces are about a uh, page or so. There are um, one or two pages from each person. Uh, let me just show you all the names. And there's a lot of names. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I think I recognise the majority of the names. Um, there's sort of it's all walks of life, so there's um, quite a few that I don't recognise, uh, and there are a lot of contributors, as you can see there, <laughs> and. Um, they're all imagining Scotland, how they uh, would like to see it in um, 
and a whole manner of ways. Uh, there's poetry, there's um, artwork, there's quite a lot of artwork. There's um, one of the architects is an architecture plan. Um, a lot of the people in this, uh, there's the architecture plan. A lot of the people are all saying the same things. You know, they, they um, want to be rid of poverty. Uh, they want to really tackle homelessness. Uh, they want sort of an equal playing field for everybody. Uh, that's gender-wise and age-wise and class-wise. Um, and they're all sort of... Uh, saying that in various different ways. Uh, there's one comedy on there. <laughs> Although having said that, I, a lot of people in Scotland of varying ages make good soup. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, there's also musicians as well. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's got all of these different voices, their different um, views, and uh, how they put their ideas. Um, it's diverse in that way. Um, some of them are sort of um, imagining a. Uh, fictional future Scotland, which is really interesting. I mean, every single one, every single contribution, uh, it really is food for thought. Um, I think sci-fi writers of any type should give this book a read because I think it will put ideas into your head. Um, <clears throat> Map of future Scotland. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's uh, 260 pages, but it's amazing how much stuff they've crammed into 260 pages. Um, if you really go at it, you could probably read this in a day, maybe. Um, but it really is good to space it out. And um, I probably time after time we'll probably come back to this oh, that's, this is a nice hardback um, <clears throat> this was um, published in 2020 so uh, I'm pretty sure that everybody writing of what they've written was um, before the pandemic and I don't know how much um, has changed um, I think maybe I mean I'm not entirely sure and uh, I don't know if there is any evidence to back me up but I do think that uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic I do think that communities have become stronger but as I say I don't have um, any uh, evidence of that. Um, I'm trying to see what's... Yeah, published in uh, 2020. And um, it was supposed to be... It was supposed to be a thingy at the iWrite Festival, but uh, the iWrite Festival, as I documented, uh, was um, cancelled. <laughs> actually, uh, missed this. I wasn't... Um, I didn't book tickets for this, actually. But... Uh, they posted some of the stuff, what the the event would have been like online and on YouTube. So I'll leave a link to it down below if I can. Um, I'm going to read uh, one uh, extract. Um, if this video is corporate claimed, you'll know why. <laughs> but I don't think it will be. Um... I mean, I think this 
um, might be the most beautiful one, but uh, there's quite a lot of really nice stuff. This is um, by Zoe Strachan, a Scottish writer. I think she's written about four novels, maybe more than that. <clears throat> Recently I was on the ferry from Burnery to Leverborough, crossing the Sound of Harris. It can be a tricky route, apparently, but the sun was shining, the marker boys were bobbing gently, and the Cook's machine was dispensing hot burn liquid somewhat akin to coffee. A huge bird drifted past, and several tourists rushed to the port side. I was a half tourist myself, taking the scenic route to do some work in Stornoway, so I ran for the door too, because a sea eagle was drifting alongside us just for a moment or two, its feathers glowing, its vast wings beating once, twice and away. As a Hebridean pal tweeted to me, others have blackbirds or sparrows, we have neighbourhood sea eagles. I met someone on Lismore, once whose idea of a bird feeder was pegging meat to our washing line. Birds of prey, raptors, exert a particular pull on us. Kestrels, perching like sentinels on fence posts along the motorway. The eeriness of an owl's face caught in torchlight on a country road. Red kites sky dancing by the Firth of Clyde, peregrines nesting in an abandoned high-rise, a lucky glimpse of a hen harrier over heather and peat bog. It seems that many of my memories of the Scotland I live in come with the image of outstretched wings, the curve of a beak. The Scotland I imagine has the golden eagle as its official national bird. It isn't just protected, it's free from persecution. When we talk about raptor persecution, we're talking about who owns our country and what they do with 12 to 18 percent of its land. We're talking about whether conservation means burning more land and the mass mitigation of wild grouse, whether it means setting snares and culling some animals so that you can shoot others for pleasure. When we talk about raptor persecution, we're opening the can of worms of class, exposing the murkiness of money and political will. We're talking about the law and who gets away with saying no comment when yet another pers- protected bird of prey is found poisoned, trapped or shot on their watch or on their land. In the Scotland, I imagine, we haven't stopped at licensing driven game shoots. We've done away with them altogether. My imagined Scotland is not an unreasonable place. Even if I don't eat meat or fish, people who are skilled enough can still shoot and catch small amounts of managed wild game for those that do. We see fewer pheasants because they aren't released into the wild in massive numbers anymore. But if you hit one with your electric car, you're obliged to eat it yourself or deliver it to a local butcher so that someone else can. Ethical eco-gamekeeping is the most popular modern apprenticeship. Poachers are prosecuted and people stalk deer with their cameras more often than with guns. My imagined Scotland is still fun. If it isn't exciting enough, we can go further. We can take away the shotguns and reintroduce wolves and bears then those who make it back from a day in the field will have earned their dram and a story far more entertaining than the one that involves shooting 400 podgy half-tame birds in a day. I don't care how fat grouse can fly. It's not exactly sporting if they're driven into your gun, pal, by summer job students and fitness freaks with dogs, whistles and lurid flags. The glorious twelfth is still the glo- still glorious. It's a public holiday. Some people make the blue peter bird cake for the local blackbirds 
and sparrows. Others celebrate with free travel for ev- anyone who wants to go, twitching in the countryside, or on a ferry to try to spot a sea eagle. The Queen still comes to Balmoral, but she has stopped contesting her tax bill and shoots clay pigeons instead. <clears throat> So, I really like that first bit uh, describing the sea eagle, um, and that's uh, to do partly with nature and partly with some other stuff. There's uh, one, one other one that's just sort of uh, similar to that. Um, <clears throat> They vary in degrees of political. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, I would say all of them are imaginative, uh, hence the title. Um, I'd really love for every country to have imagine a country. Um, I think, with all due respect to the USA, I think they would need two volumes. Um, Maybe one for the south, one for the north, possibly. I don't know how you would divide the two volumes. Um, maybe it would be um, edited by Stephen King and um, Angie Thomas, maybe. Um, the Canada Imagine a Country would be edited by Margaret Atwood. Um, Imagine a Country, the English one would be edited by, um, I think, I would say Ian McEwan and uh, Michael Rosen, I would say. Uh, I've no idea who would edit the Imagine a Country Ireland. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but every, yeah, I'd love every country to have Imagine a Country, you know, various... Um, people from all walks of life just having a paragraph or two or three pages about how they would imagine their ideal future country uh, that they live in. Um, but um, I think even if you're not Scottish, you can still uh, get a lot out of this book and come away with quite a lot. Um I've said on uh, my uh, Goodreads review, this is one of those books that needs to be in every single library and in every single school. Um, uh, we'll see, but hopefully this book will be uh, very, very popular, if not already. And hopefully it'll, um, there'll be a lot of debate and maybe there'll be... Uh, a sequel that'd be interesting um but it's definitely a five star read for me um i really loved it uh one of the best books of the well the best book of the year i've read so far but it's still january but um this is a fantastic book uh thanks for watching Bye.